The Fix by Scarface, um, an album which came out the 6th of August 2002. It's 13 songs, 47, 47 minutes and 22 seconds long. You good for me to round that down to 47 minutes? Yep. Sound, sound, sound. Perfect. Um, like I said, album came out in 2002. Um, and the reason I wanted to, to review this one this week is I think with this being, like I said, the 50th year of hip hop, I felt like we needed to really delve into our hip-hop bags and really talk about some of the legends of the game and some of their underserved projects. And I talk about Scarface quite a bit on this podcast but when I get the opportunity to. And I usually always go to The Diary from 1994. This is one of my personal favorite albums of all time. And so I thought, let me take it to another one of his albums, which, as I mentioned in, in the intro, has a mixed bag of reviews. Some people calling it Five Out of Five, the source giving its Five Mark Mics Award, which is very coveted at the time, basically declaring an album a classic. But then at the same time, you've got other reviews which have it more middle and ground. Um, so I thought it'd be really interested to bring it to um, a podcast which, you know, reviews albums regularly and, and has some sort of credibility in the game. Um, but I couldn't find them, so instead I brought it here. Um, but before we get into this review, yeah, I know I was saying, but, but before we get into this review, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, we really appreciate it. If you would like the video, subscribe and ring the bell to stay abreast on all of our notifications and all of our videos. But let's get into it, man. Scarface the Fix. Had you listened to this album before? I hadn't. I hadn't. Had you had songs off this album before? I hadn't. Brilliant. So this is yeah. fresh for you. Fantastic. Have you listened to a Scarface album before? I have not. I have this not. This is your first Scarface album. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so what were your thoughts then? Um, It was a tough one for me. And when I say it was a tough one, well, uh, we started off this episode by asking what we've been listening to. Um, And I know, I know, Paul, you've made a very big point to say that it's a scare in the whole summer. But for me, I've been on the opposite vibe, man. It's been a lover boy summer for me, as usual. You know, sunny, the flowers are out. I've been listening to my love songs from all these beautiful, beautiful women who have beautiful, beautiful voices. And that's really been the vibe that I've been defaulting to so far. Um, so for me to try and switch gears and listen to Scarface, The Fix, it was like an almost jarring change. And it was like, ah, I'm fighting... I'm fighting against instinct here to listen to this damn near. Um, so it was tough. It was tough. That being said, this is a great album. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this album from the start. Um, man, man, it's like, because I've heard Scarface here and there, but every time I've heard Scarface, it's always been like a single or a feature. And I've never really like paid attention to it. Was just like, oh, okay, this is Scarface. Okay, I see why people get upset when he's not mentioned in these top rappers list or whatever. Like, he's clearly good at what he does, but I've never actually sat down and listened to a Scarface album, as I just said. Um, and now, having listened to this, it's like, oh, like there's way more that I've just been sleeping on, and I didn't even realize how much I was sleeping on. It was, it's really, really good. It's a great album. Well, let's get straight into the review then, um, as we do. What what were, what were the themes you were picking out um, as you were going through listening to this album? There's one line that Scarface says, and I I should have noted down the name of the song. And I should have known at the time that I was going to forget the name of the song as well. I can't remember where it's from. You might remember the name of the song, though. Um, but he mentions the line. He says, I'm trying to make heaven. I'm living in hell. Um and that's really like the theme of this entire album, man. Like, it's sort of like the conflict that he's going through throughout is like very, very telling. You know, he's talking about the life that he's living, not by choice, but damn near out of necessity. Um, this life of crime, of having to make tough decisions, of listen, we're murderers. Like, he's not living a glamorous life at all throughout this album but at the same time you hear what he's trying to do you hear him talking about his religion the conflict he's going through in some of these songs like it's it's crazy like it's as i said it's the duality of what he wants to be living the life he wants to be living the life he's trying to live but also the life he has to live and 
the life that he's not happy that he's living, but hey, it's the card seals dealt. This is what I have to do to survive. And it's like very clear throughout the entire album. Yeah, no, I feel you. I definitely feel like, like um, he really does get that point across of, of the the difficulty of the come up being in Houston in the hood and what, you know, they were going through there and even some of the things that were going on, on at the time. Um, but then, like I said, doubling that up with, you know, he's in an elevated position, how that affects him, but still being able to tell the story of the struggle. Um, and he does it in such a, he's, he's one of the things about Scarface, which I, I've always loved and why I hold him personally in such high regard is I genuinely think he's the best storyteller in hip hop. Like I genuinely think his ability to, to as go back to an age old saying that we have here on the podcast, paint pictures with words is, is second to none. Like, even if you go to the, in the first song, full song on the, on the album with safe and his intro to verse one, where he just spells out the scene and the setting of, you know, you're down and out money, funny, you hustle and die on the verge of putting your jewelry and selling your ride. Somebody should have told you, ain't no life in these streets. You out here till you touch it. When you touch it, you eat. Like he set the scene of this is the mentality you as the listener need to put yourself in for the rest of the journey that I'm taking you on. And then the journey that he's taking one is one of real struggle, real hustle, the difficulty in overcoming and the difficulty you're trying to elevate to a to another level um and that alongside like i say just telling the story of his hood the hood and what that looks like i think is 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 really what i i get from this um this project so moving swiftly on then let's talk about the songs let's talk about the songwriting and the lyricism of this project what, what did you think especially with this being your first scarface album is as you just said, man, the pictures that he's able to paint with his words, insane. It's insane to me. Um, you know, I'm looking at a song like What Can I Do? And it's like, it's crazy that a song called The Fix with the album cover that he has, a song that comes after a song where he's talking about we're murderers. <laughs> and this song feels like I'm going to church. Like I'm, when I listen to it, I feel like I'm sat on the, the fifth row of a church and I'm being preached to. Like it's crazy the pictures, the imagery, the scenery that he's able to produce with just words. And I think um, it's a real talent. It's a real, real talent, and it's it's given me a brand new appreciation for Scarface that ah, I, I don't say I didn't have it before, but I didn't have it to the level that I have it now. Well, I'm now for the first time, I'm understanding why people talk about Scarface in the regards that they talk about Scarface. In. Um, how can I put it, man? Like, let me let me even, as I said before, in fact, I think the most poignant one I'm living in heaven. No, I'm living in hell. I'm trying to make heaven. Like, the simplicity of that, the simplicity of that line, but just placed at the perfect point in the album where it's like you've told me you've explained why where you're living is hell like you've explained it very in detail where i'm like i don't feel envious of the life you're living at all no part of me wants to try and live the life you're living but i'm trying to make heaven and you go on to explain hey man this is my faith my faith is important to me yes but at the same time blah 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 it's like man like i can see it like the storytelling just makes so much sense throughout the whole album and the way he's able to do that with his lyricism throughout. Chef's Kiss. Chef's Kiss. By the way, I'll be remiss if I didn't mention it. The album's aged superbly. Oh, superbly. fantastic. This being my first listen, like, there's no way, there's no way where nostalgia is playing a role in this and me saying, oh, yeah, it still sounds good to me. This is just my first listen straight up. And there's nowhere, there's only like maybe one place on this album where I'm like, ah, okay. That's very 2000 sounding. Throughout the mm -hmm. rest of this album, this is just a great sounding album. Like this could release mm -hmm. yesterday and I'll be like, man, this is a good album. This is a great album. Like it's aged so well. No, no doubt. And I think in what you're saying, man, like you really hit the nail on the head and again of what 
I think is his superpower in rap is his storytelling and is his ability to take you to where he's talking about, you know what I'm saying? So like even on a song as simple, and I say simple because Scarface can get really deep and complex. So not say that this song is simple, but it's simple by his standards, in my opinion, on my block. Like mm. every day it's been the same old thing on my block. You either working or you slanging cocaine on my block. You had to hustle because that's how we was raised on my block. Like just taking you through that and explaining to you like, this is where, this is what our life was like. This is what our block is like. This is what the hood is like. I can never leave it because my niggas need me. You know, that that age old saying, of, can I leave the game? Is the, is the street still going to love me, man? But like that, that ability to take us as the listener and transport us boom, into like, Houston, Texas in what 70s, 80s, and even it through to the 2000s and what what that looked like. And again, I, I agree with you, it's aged superbly. Like the sentiments, the themes, the sounds, it still sounds like it, it could have come out two weeks ago and it would still feel just as palpable, right? So you first again. So that last sentence again. Where did I freeze? Uh, that last sentence, it was just you could have heard last week and it still sound just powerful. Your video for us, thanks. Yeah, um, it could have come out last week and it would have sounded literally just as palpable. And then you add into that the, the fact that the features, especially the rap features now, so you're looking at Hove, um, Beanie Siegel, Nas specifically, they played on that too. So when mm-hmm. uh, so when Hove and Beanie come in on um, Guess Who's Back and Hove's able to tell you like about still selling crack in my clothes, don't make me have to relapse on these hoes, take it back out, taxing them roads. It's he's back in that, he's in that where I'm from mindset from 97, but this is 2002 that they're talking about this, but they're still able to paint those pictures. And then even the same with Nas on In Between Us, um, when he starts out his his bar and he's like, circumstances are like my first fight I lost. I was swinging, my arms bucking, adrenaline pumping. His flow on that was crazy, by the way, for Nas. I don't mm-hmm. have to say that. But then the the lyricism to, again, take us back to the hood, the block, and, and the story that they're trying to tell, I think, was one. I think it was just a really well done job all around. And 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 so I, I really I really celebrate this, this project for its... It's storytelling. I think that that to me is a central theme of it is is the ability to tell stories and transport us as the audience way back to to those times. Um, mm. So you touched about it. You touched on it a bit with say you know it sounds so good it could come out last week. Talk to me about the production on 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 this project and and the production element of this album. Yeah, I I was so impressed by the production that a part of me really wanted if I had more time. And I, that's a weird thing to say, given that we had an extra week. But if I had more time, I would have loved to sit down and really like go in depth on who produced every single song on this album, because the production of this album was crazy. And it was one thing that shocked me since we've hit record today, in fact, is you saying that he was from Houston. I can't lie. He doesn't sound South, like Southern to me. I didn't pick up on that. I really just assumed that he was another guy in New York. That really shocked me. Um, because the production has a very New York feel. It has a very early two thousands boom bat feel that is somewhat timeless because anyone can hop on a lot like Sky Zoo uses a lot of the same sounds that we hear in on the production side on this album. And I think it's just part of the timeless nature of it of that sound in general. On top of that, the sequencing of this album, damn near flawless, needs to be flawless for an album like this, needs to be flawless for an album like this, where again, you're taking us through the story of, okay, this is life I'm living, this is life I want to live. Like not to hammer down too point too much on this point, but if the songs are sequenced poorly on this album, then this album sounds very, very different. And may like it would be if this album was sequenced any differently, I don't think it would be as good as it sounds. I think it would sound much, much, much worse. I think the story that he takes us on throughout this album helps to make 
helps to place the songs exactly where they need to be down there. Um, but yeah, back to the actual production side of this. It's timeless. It's timeless, man. It's timeless. Um, every song sounds great. And I can't picture a world where they stop sounding great. The fact that this came out in 2003 and sounds great in 2023 is insane. Is insane. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not sure if you have out like the producers of this album, but they deserve all the flowers. I do. I'm not going to go through all of them, but like I noted in the intro, man, you have names like Mike Dean, the Neptunes, um, Kanye, China Black. So a lot, a lot of different people worked on it. Scarface himself, obviously, um, a lot of different people who worked on it. And yeah, I think the production. I think it's it it's good on multiple levels. Um, because there are a lot of songs that sound distinctive and 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 very isolated in themselves. So on on my block being one, um, guess who's back? Even safe, they sound very distinctive in themselves, but they still fit for what the theme of the album is and what they're trying to do here, which is which which is great. I think to that sequencing point, I think it was a genius idea to separate and really segregate the. Guess who's back? Safe in cold blood on my block from the what can I do someday heaven side of the album. <coughs> from the what can I do heaven someday side of the album, um, because it gives the album two very distinct feels. And like you say, you get to see that journey from this is what life is this is what life i this is what i want life to be as as you mentioned um and i really liked the the decisions i have fixed as the outro of just mm-hmm. instrumental for a minute and and mike dean did really great work there just to like let you sort of just mull over what you've heard you mm. know what i'm saying just mull over what you you've listened to and just phase you out of the album, similar to how they phased us in with the fix yep. in the intro. But I, I really like that that decision to do that because I think again it just gives you that time to really sit back and be like, yo, what have I just ingested? You know what I'm saying? Like, what have I just taken in? That journey from safe all the way down to I ain't the one. I mean, he still finishes off on I ain't the one, but with heaven and someday in there as well, with the R and B elements to it. Also, once again, we just have to shout out Kelly Price in the cut, man. Oh, um, man. Man. Well, fabulous all-timer of an artist. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really like the production on this tape. I really did. And I think it's it's very... Um, Scarface, the rapper, for me, is someone who could float on any beat you could give him. Like, I've seen him do it now throughout the projects out here. But it's very different from... Like I said in the intro, like, my favorite Scarface project is The Diary. I talk about The Diary all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the two productions are very different, oh, and it really? shows his, yeah. But it's again, it's you got the diary is 94, this is 2002, and so you see his ability to like live on anything, no matter where the sound of hip hop was or is at the time. Um, I think that, yeah, it's just once again a testament to him and, and his artistry for real, and in that sense. Mm. So let's talk about the songs. Let's talk about the songs. Give me your top three songs in reverse chronology. Reverse order. All right, cool. So at number three, I would have Guess Who's Back featuring Jay-Z and Beanie Siegel. Um, it is a great, great song. Jay-Z was doing what Jay-Z does. Never, ever lets anyone down. Um, Beanie Siegel, great on the song. And then Scarface. Just floated, just absolutely floated on Guess Who's Back, man. So I have that at number three. Um, number five, I have... I'm, I'm, excuse me? No, number five, sorry. <laughs> number two, I looked at number five, so that's my bad. <laughs> number two, I have song number five on my block. Um, it's just one of those songs, man. It's, it's very transformative in the production, in the lyricism. It takes you to where, well, for me, anyway, I pictured being in New York. Now that I know it's from Houston, I'm going to listen to this completely different. Um, but, yeah, it just transports you, and you feel like, yeah, cool, I can 
envision the block he's talking about down there. Um, yeah, on my block, great, great song. Have that number two. And at number one, I have Someday featuring Faith Evans. Faith Evans is... She's just one of those names that when I see her featured on the song, I'm like, oh, that's going to be a hit. That's going to be a song that Raheem, Raheem loves. Um, and this is no exception. The song is great without Faith, Faith Evans um, contributions, but then you add Faith Evans contributions to it, and it's like, yeah, clear, clear, clear of everything. Um, so, yeah, that's my top three. You? We got the same songs in different order. I got Someday at three. I got Guess Who's Back at two, and I got On My Block at one. Um, mm. for, for many of the same reasons that, that you just articulated, I think Someday as a song, Faith Evans is sensational. I think, again, the messaging and the story of it, of, of this really gospel adjacent hip hop ballad, um, is very, very thought provoking and timely in the context of the album. But I'm in love with the street shit and I'm in love with the storytelling mm-hmm. and the aspects in which the array of rappers between Hove, Beanie, and then Face on the the two other songs I mentioned with Guess Who's Back and On My Block. Just the way they paint that picture. I love the production of, of On My Block. I love I love it on this project, on this album. I love it in when Cam does his backroom freestyle, which is just timeless at this point, and he raps over this beat. It sounds perfect in any... Um, in, it's, it sounds amazing anywhere. And then I think what Scarface does on it to, again, just to set the scene of this is where I'm from, this this is where we live, and this is how life goes for us, I think, for me, is, is a message that I always love hearing him rap and resonates with me. So I got on my block at one, guess who's back at two, and someday at three. Mm. Mm. Not bad. I like it. Uh, album rankings? Let's take it to the scales. So... The album rankings go as such. I hate I ever listened to this. Won't be listened to again. Whole lot of mid. Might stay in rotation for about a week. Pretty damn good. Serious project. And then either me and or Paul can give the album our 50% stamp of approval. In the case that we both give it our 50% stamp of approval, the album will become two stubborn Nigerians approved. Paul. Well, you give stamped. me stamped. Stamped. I am very. I was very shocked when I was preparing my my you know intro to find that there were publications that had this as a middling album. I'd only ever seen it spoken about in really high light. So I was interested to actually go into it for myself personally and really reflect on it. And I I, I couldn't see what faults they were finding with with the project. Um so I it is it is stamped for me. I do think it's it's as good as its hip hop classic um um reputation gives it. Um I really love it. I love again faces on top form um as top form as he can be um to to be honest with you and I think the production backs it up. I think the features back it up. I think the, the stories that he tell backs it up. So for me, this is definitely a, a, a it has my stamp for sure. I'm right there with you. It is stamped. It's been a while since we stamped an album, um, but this is one of those that has to be man. This is this is one of those albums that you listen to it the first time. You're like, oh, this is a classic. Like you already know. Like the quality is very clear. Um, for it to sound this good, twenty years after the fact, is mind blowing. Um, for it to be an album that I just want to continue listening to despite me being in my lover boy summer phase is mind blowing to me. It's an album that I'm upset that I'm only listening to it now. I wish I could have listened to it back then because maybe there's a big possibility that this was an album that was just ahead of its time. Um, We'll never know because we have, well, for me, I will never know because I'm only listening to it now. Um, but that might explain some of the reviews, but who knows? Who knows, man? Um, but yeah, this is the album that I'm stamping. So with my stamp and with Paul's stamp, this album is officially Too Stubborn Nigerian Approved. Can we get a round of applause to this bitch? Can we get a round of applause? <laughs> man, that was the review 
called The Fix by Scarface. If you enjoyed that, um, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, ring the notification bell so that you'll stay, you stay up to date with other videos that we drop like this. Um, you can follow us on our socials at 2S Nigerians for Twitter and at 2 underscore stubborn underscore Nigerians on Twitter, on, on TikTok and on Instagram. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. We have other videos that you can watch in the corner and we have the subscribe button right there.